Welcome to the Zero to Five Million Dollar Podcast. I'm Sean Finder, and I'm with my co-host Ollie Whitfield. This show is brought to you by AutoClose, a vanilla soft company. Ollie, why don't you uh, introduce today's guests and what we're going to be talking about today? Welcome to the Zero to Oh, sorry, I do have short hair today. No technical issues. Thank God. <laughs> also, thank God, I've got my good friend Tom Slocum with us today. Now, in case you don't know Tom, uh, he's been a sales rep, sales leader multiple times. I'm not even going to start with where and why because uh, it's a lot of experience, but he's now doing his own thing. So I think it's been about a year that he's been doing this. And uh, I thought, you know, look, don't invite someone on the podcast when they've just started. They're obviously busy doing and they haven't made the mistakes yet. They haven't done the things yet to talk about. So now we've had a little bit of time. Tom's here. How you doing, dude? How's your first year been? Hey, great to be here, guys. Thanks for having me back and being here with you both. Um, and yeah, it's kind of cooler to, to let people settle in, get some ammo, some discussion versus, hey, you started last week. Tell me all about it. <laughs> What's your priorities? What are you doing? Uh, it's like how we do it in prospecting, right? As soon as we get a job alert, it's like, oh, hey, you got a new job. And it's like, dude, they're not going to get back to you right now. Um, but for me, yeah, man, it's uh, 10 months. So we're about two two months away from that one year mark come September. And uh, man, I learned a lot. A uh, couple highlights, if I could just be brief. You're going to have a lot of seasons. There's going to be highs and lows. So that's interesting. You'll have moments where, you know, my first 90 days, things took off. Then they leveled out. Execution started happening. Things started to stall because you have to balance, you know, prospecting, closing. There's no CS team to put things on. Everything is you. And then once those clients wrap up, right, you're back up to a higher season and things come through again. And so you just have to balance those. Um, so that's one part. Two, I would say I've learned to have what uh, a good friend of mine, Galen, calls uh, like a board of directors. I probably have three to five folks that I have to count on. Um, they know that. I know that. We're there for one another. They tell me what I need to hear. Definitely not what I want to hear um, and just kind of keep me level headed because what you'll find is a lot of imposter syndrome and air quotes, right? Like you'll get these thoughts, you'll have clients push back on things and it'll question, you know, make you question things, it'll question yourself. And so, and then just like, what do you focus on, right? So having a board of directors just keeps you super close. You don't need many. You could probably bring that down to two or three even, uh, but you just want close people there. And then third, something Jesse Allett shared even yesterday is like, your customers are everything, everything, every client, every person that said yes to you, every person that's working with you, double down on it more than you've ever doubled down on something, right? Analyze it, study it, find out what they're liking, what they're not liking, get that feedback as soon as you wrap up, because that will help you evolve your company from being this wide net of business to a very drilled down focus to exactly what, hey, working with me, what did you like? What didn't you? And exactly what did you feel was the most successful or the best time that we had together? And where was that? And then just scale that, right? And double down on all of that. So that would be like my three kind of main things that I've taken just from 10 months of doing this is that, you know, customers are everything, have a good support system of folks you can trust. Um, you know, and, and know how to manage your highs and lows, right? And your, your mental. But it's been good. So just to start, you know, obviously those are some of the things that you – now, what are some of the almost surprises that happened early on or challenges, like early on challenges that might have happened in that first 90 days? Because, you know, the first 90 days with everything is is, is the hardest. Um, so what, what was kind of something that you didn't expect? Um, so a couple things was – one was I started off with the kitchen sink when I dove in. Um, I could do a lot, you know, for people that don't know me, right? I've got a 16 year sales background. I've done individual contributor, full sales cycle, sales leader, and I know a lot. I do. But when you go to market, you can't go like that um, yeah. because people will come in for the wrong things. You're, you're not really understanding what you're kind of selling. And so what I had to realize and what was the most challenging part mm -hmm. was, Tom, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> what is the business? <laughs> uh, what are you trying to do, right? And so the SD Lab, you know, for me is, is I'm a consultant. I help founders, VPs of sales, CROs build a repeatable process with their sales team, right? Their go-to-market team um, and make sure that's repeatable and it's successful and they can scale with it uh, because it's a challenge for some. 
but that can be very wide, right? That's a lot of different things. And so I had to get very clear with that. And so in the first 90 days, all I did was have as many conversations as I could. I think I had like 60 demos in 90 days of just anybody and everybody that would talk to me. And I just took it as ammo. So that was something that I wasn't prepared for. It's like building clarity, making sure your ICP, your buyer persona, the stuff that I'm coaching, I've lived out my own business model. (laughs) I've lived it out in the last 10 months, like, because that was the most challenging and most unexpected part. The other part that I learned was how valuable a team is. I didn't, you go through life, you got your teams, you work at companies, you do your thing. But when you go into a solo journey, you realize how integral the people around you in those companies actually were, right? And how nice it was to, hey, Sean, can you go work on this for me from a marketing angle while I work on this? You do everything. So that kind of threw me off. I thought for 15, 16 years of doing sales, I was prepared for this. I had wanted to be a business owner one day and I thought I had all this, you know, wasn't the greatest moment, but I felt ready enough, not even close, yeah. right? I was like, no, nothing prepares you for this journey. And so that was unexpected is how tough it was. Um, balancing everything, getting yourself to go to market, finding people to work with. Um, and then from a client perspective, it was tough on what I've seen a lot of friends go through when they're starting and what I, you know, you have to be good at selling. And that's where people are hard at. I know a lot of friends who started businesses and they're, they've got a great product or they have something. They just don't know how to sell it. They can't get a clothes to save their life. They're not really good at it. And so when you realize you have to cater to discovery, demo, really getting in touch with your customer base or your prospective buyers, that's a challenge, right? Because selling is a lot different when you're that invested. It's you now. And, you know, back as an AE or an SDR or something, you could get a meeting booked and somebody else ran that and took it to deal and they were responsible. Or as an AE, if you lost one, not a big deal, right? Your SDR would give you 10 more or this and that, but you're on your own. <laughs> Every deal matters. Every conversation matters. And you get super stressed and invested to where it can derail you and kind of get you into a funk because you start questioning yourself. Again, that imposter syndrome starts coming up and it's it's just different. So that first 90 days was just weird transformation of growth and kind of figuring out where to put your focus. Don't go build a website and get into all that stuff. And like, Oh my God, I got to do all of this. Like, where do you put your time? And there's no manual for it. You can, you ask any founder or other solo person, Sean would give a different answer. Ollie would give a different answer. I could go talk to three more people. They're going to tell me what I should focus. Like everybody has, it's kind of a solo journey. And you just have to accept that in a way while still seeking counsel. So you, you mentioned one thing before uh, we, we jump to the next um, thing is you mentioned one thing is selling. You know, that's the most important thing that you realize. And I would say there's two things. I would say sellings and understanding numbers. So yeah. I come from an I, I have an MBA in finance and I went into sales and was, you know, was selling for auto clothes. But my my finance background really helped me in my business because with the numbers, a you can sell, but. Are you selling at the right price? Are you making profit? Are you, are you, you know, are you drowning in debt? How, you know, when you what's your budget? So I think those two things are most important: selling, but you also have to understand all the numbers because you could be selling something, but realizing I'm selling all this, but I'm actually not making any money. Um, Dude, so I would think those are the two things. Hundred percent, and you know that I am a a science guy behind the data, right? I tell SDRs all the time: know your minimums, you know go. the levers to pull, yeah. because. Yeah. When my friends reach out to me and they're like, look, I'm not closing deals and I'm having a hard time. My first question is, okay, in the last 30 days, how many people have you comfortably pitched your product to or your service to? Like a yeah. real conversation. And they're like, two people. And I'm like, okay, then what are you mad at? You think you have a 50% <laughs> or 100% close rate? So when so I give this advice because what it did for me is like knowing standards or industry standards of this stuff will help you feel a little bit comfortable. Like for me... Yeah. It's a one in four. If I talk to four people and I give the pitch of SD Lab confidently, comfortably, they're the right person, they have a real problem, I should be able to close one of those if all goes well. Now, if I'm not, then I need to analyze some things. Maybe my demo discovery skills aren't doing well. Doesn't immediately mean the product's shit or if something's not there, it just means I need to look into these levers, read these calls through, kind of understand where stuff went. So I've been trying to get my friends to do exactly that, Sean. It's like, 
yeah. you have to work off a basis, right? Like, because if you just assume you need to close a hundred percent or, Oh, I should be closing every two deals or one for every two that I talk to, you could set yourself up for some really mental stress and toxicity and frustration because you're shooting for home runs when, dude, let's be real. One in four is fair enough. That's 25%. If you can't do that, then yeah, we should talk. But you just told me you've talked to two people this month. Go talk to two more and then let me know what happens. Guess what happens? They close one. They're like, oh my God, the next two I booked, that one, you know, I do it sometimes when people ghost me. I'll get deals. I've got five in the pipeline. Three will ghost me or just dip on me. Had great conversations. I've done everything I possibly could. Won't ever hear from them again, which is fine. But I know and not to stress about that because I have two more in the pipeline, right? I know the one's going to come out of it, right? And it may, I thought it was these ones, but it's going to be one of them. And if that doesn't happen, I need issues, right? Same with doing outbound. Know your numbers. How many dials does it take to have a conversation? If you're only as a founder-led sales doing 20 dials a day, don't be mad that you're not getting business or being able to book some meetings. Go look at 50 calls every day. Run that number on a week. Break that down and say, okay, for every... 30 calls, I'm getting a connection. And for every 15 connections, I'm getting a pitch or a meeting booked. Now you know to not be frustrated. And so I, I love that point because that's that's a huge part of the selling is yeah. put realistic standards. Know your revenue goal, right? You said profit margins. A lot of people are messing up there. They keep spending money to make money. Like run lean, run super lean, get a few basic tools and all you should focus on for the first year of your business is how to maximize your customers. Give great testimonials, upsell them, cross-sell them, drive further relationships with them. Because once that happens, where I've now gotten in about my, my warm-up moment that's starting to happen this last two kind of months is now I'm getting referrals like crazy. I don't have to outbound. I'm getting people to be like, hey, I heard from so-and-so. Hey, I, you know, and now my biggest lead source for my business is a referral. Most of the closes I've had probably in the last 90 days have come from an open intro, not outbound, not a cold, nothing else, but a referral. And that's because all I have focused on is those people that said yes to me, I'm going to give you the whole damn world and you're getting it yeah. cheap because all, from here, my prices are going up, right? You got it cheap. You're going to get it great. And I'm going to use every resource I can to give you the best experience and make you feel you got more out of it because you're going to go tell people and you're yeah. going to give me that testimonial. And when I go into calls, if I can tell you in a call when you're unsure and have quick responses to people I've helped, comments that I can publicly tell you, I've closed deals faster than ever because they believe they, they, they believe it. They get conviction. They're like, oh, you know what you're doing. Perfect. I'd love to work with you. Right. So if you're um, if you're doing so well with referrals, then what's um, is there a plan in the future like to do more or is it more about cause it depends what way you want to go. You can scale by price which means revenue goes up or you can scale by number of clients which means maybe you need people to help you deal with it but that's two ways Are you, do you know what way you're going to go uh, and then obviously that depends how you approach it because you do outbound if you want more because referrals right. can't scale particularly <laughs> but if the other way maybe they do it's it's an interesting pickle and that's where i am now your first year you're super invested ground level you've got to own everything right from sourcing to closing by year two, you've got to look at ways to scale and remove yourself. I am very limited as a consultant because it's time. It's me. I'm executing everything with my clients. And so it's not like selling a product. A product has no limitations. I can sell 50 licenses in a month and fulfill those, right? It's a click of a button for these people. So it's a time thing, right? And so it's finding that balance on, yeah, I want to grow. I want to scale. I want to double up on clients, but how much can I really retain that doesn't risk the quality of what's being given, right? Because again, what's the quality is what's gotten me here. So if that falters, what could that do? And so, yeah, do you do you look at scaling just numbers, taking on more, or do you find a way to scale in a more con conservative way that's a little bit tighter and uh, or get people involved? And Ali, I don't have an answer. I'm really at that pickle right now of... Do I let other people start getting in the cookie jar to where now I've done everything in the first year? I know the repeatables. I know the things that I need to do that are pretty consistent that I can bring in folks and get a little small team to start doing those things for me, giving me more time because I'm kind of living my own SD lab model is I'm trying to get to the point now where I work on my business, not in my business. 
might be too soon. I'm only 10 months, a year in. Some people are like, yo, I've done that grind for three years, five years before that's come there. Um, and then I've had others where they're like, yeah, dude, year two, like get that stuff scaled, figure it out and now start just working on your business. Right. And so I'm trying to get to the point where I can scale. I would like to bring in some folks that can do what I do with me and then, you know, double my client and count. Right. And then work with my, my team to then deliver for my clients. Um, because it would free me up to do a lot more of the things that I love while still giving a good quality to my client. But at the same time, I love what I do. I love being this close. Yeah. I love working with the client, literally being in it and doing everything. And, and then I have the control of that. Right. And uh, so I don't have an answer. It's a tough pickle. It's one I'm kind of processing and trying to get to in the next two months of like when I first opened up, it was the goal. I was going to scale. I was going to have a great team and I was just going to work on the business. And now I'm like, does that really have to be the goal? Why can't I just make a living and take this slow, do it right, really focus, really take care of good clients. And then in good time, that door will open when it needs to. Right. And I can go into it. So it's a pickle. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so right now, is it just you? So it was uh, just last month. I brought in an interim COO. Ashley Early uh, from the Netherlands. Um, we've been in the same space together. She's ran multi-international companies, been a part of two IPOs, and she is coming in with the operational mind to free me up in operationalizing a lot of the stuff we're doing, looking at everything I've done now in the last year, finding those gaps, finding those things that can be super repeatable, and then she's going to step in, which will allow us to take on a few more extra clients because she'll uh, alleviate some of the sessions with me. I can trust that she's in the same methodology. So we're there. Um, we're trying to see if that'll work. We're on a 90 day trial and then it'll go full time by the, the one year mark is the plan. Um, and yeah, okay. so far it's been great. Um, hiring is one of those scary things, Sean, and I think is a great topic, you know, is a lot of business owners freak out at this pivotal part of their, their business because it's relinquishing, relinquishing control. It's trusting you're fired, hiring people that you think in an interview tell you everything you need to hear and then potentially you've got to cut them, right? you got to hire slow, fire fast, right? And so I've watched people be like, they will go through the grind as long as they can just because they're not willing to give it up. They don't want to put somebody in there um, and they'll go through hell for two, three years, right? And it's like, where is that point of trust? And it's tough hiring. And I've, I hired somebody a while back. I tried to get an SDR in. It didn't come through. Right. So you, you got to learn. Um, I've been burned by partners. And so it's still got that PTSD kind of feel. You're still kind of reserved. Um, but the only way to get your business to where you need to go and effective, you got to do it with people. You can't go alone. If uh -huh. you if you're uh -huh. too wrapped up in being alone, you're not, you're not going to go far. You're going to get burnt. You're going to yeah. be, it's just not going to do good. Um, very few can do it. So if you're one of them, great. But I would say I would rather hire and try to go through a couple people and try to find those right people than not do it at all. Right. That's yeah. just me. I'd rather try to get somebody, try to get a team together, try to get the support versus no, I'm good. I don't want to work with nobody. I'm just going to do this thing and I'm okay. Because it won't go well. And uh, that's great. And a lot of great insight into, you know, how to start that first year. Uh, where can people, well, first off, before we said, how do you self-educate yourself right now? Do you listen to any other podcasts? Are you reading any books? Yeah. So um, right now I'm, I'm into two main topics, uh, partnerships and employment advocacy, right? Morgan Ingram, right. my friend, Will Taylor are in these spaces. And so I've been reading books, uh, audibles on, Community, social media marketing, community or partnerships, right? I'm reading uh, the Partner Hacker Handbook on partnerships. For me, my best way of learning, though, for me and what I tend to do is I just do. So if there's anything I want to learn, yeah. if there's anything I want to do, a topic, I try to just dive into it on my own and break it and try to figure it out um, and yeah. then go from there because it's how I learn. So podcasts and like books and some of those things don't always do it for me. Uh, because I have to read it and then I have to go try to apply that concept or it will never retain. Yes. Um, so yeah. a lot of the self-teaching I'm doing right now is I'm trying AI. I'm playing with it. I'm breaking it. I'm trying to push it. I'm trying to see all the different tools. Um, I'm trying to learn about business and ownership by just kind of failing hard and fast. Like I'm looking for it um, because yeah. I want to fit. 
like I said, in this last 10 months, I've gotten through half the shit that most consultants haven't even touched yet. And they're like, Tom, what the heck? And I'm like, I'm already there. I've done it. I've went through it. I've burned the relationships. I've had some bad invoicing issues with businesses. Like I've done everything y'all have already told me to be on the lookout for. I did it in the first 10 months, right? I went out seeking it. (laughs) Um, So I tend to fail uh, immediately. Um, Books though, that's that's where I'm at. Um, Trying to read some of those. Podcasts are always good for me. This, I like listening to other people, learning from other people that have, yeah. uh, my favorite quote or one of the mantras I live by is if uh, you haven't walked in my shoes, don't tell me how to tie them, right? Don't tell me how to tie my shoes if you haven't walked in them. So I'm really trying to listen to podcasts with founders, CEOs, yeah. dudes that dudes and women that have done this, that are running $300 million businesses that are making you know a million dollars per day just doing what they do and everything is outsourced. Everything is running. And that's how I'm trying to learn. It's just listening to them. Um, and so that's been a big thing for me where people can find me. Go ahead. Yeah. No, you're good. Yeah. Where can people find you? Uh, I'm on LinkedIn. It's super simple for me. Really easy call to action is if you go to my LinkedIn, Tom Slocum, you get everything. I'm out there. Um, links to all my link tree, my podcast, you know, my website, SD lab is out there. The SD lab.com. Uh, but come chat with me on LinkedIn. That's where my community is. And that's where I love to be. Um, and that's where you find me more than often than anything. Perfect. Well, thank you, Tom, for uh, joining us today. This has been a, a great episode. And thank you, everybody, for listening. If you enjoyed the show today, don't forget to give us a five-star review wherever you're listening from and subscribe so you don't miss the next show. Thank you again. And thank you, Ollie.